Welcome to Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. I'm glad that you're here today. Everyone is welcome, whether you're in person or whether you're worshiping with us online, whether you're wide awake or still have a sleep, whether you're eager or reluctant to be here. No matter what life circumstances you're in or family arrangements, everyone is welcome. I would like to call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin, and as always, if you're here in person, please sign the friendship registers at both ends of the pews and pass them down so that you'll know who is sitting with you and can greet them by name. Thank you today to Jan McGilliard, who, while being a member and elder in our congregation, is also a missional commissioned pastor in the Presbytery of the Peaks. Um, a commissioned pastor is an ordained elder who, after discernment, training, and examination, is commissioned by a local governing body to carry out pastoral duties, such as preaching, administering the sacraments, performing weddings, and moderating the session for a congregation. Today, she'll be providing the sermon and leading communion for her own congregation, ours, along with Reverend Emily Rhodes Hunter, while Pastor Sarah is on vacation. Thanks to both of you so much. In your bulletin, please take note of the, and mark your calendars if you're interested in the two things that are happening next Sunday. There's an interfaith reading group on Sunday afternoon and a sacred music class, music class offered by Larry Wyatt on Sunday morning. And we invite you to join us for refreshments after worship in the gathering space. Let us now center ourselves as we begin worship together. Please rise in body or in spirit and let us lift our voices together as we worship God. In this land of freedom and beauty, let us give thanks to God. Let us praise the Holy One who created the blue skies, the glassy prairies, the vast desert lands, and the breathtaking mountains of our homeland. Let us unite in worship of the Creator who formed all lands and all people, and who declared without hesitation, it is good. Come, let us worship God.
Let us pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us birth by water and Holy Spirit, teach us how to live always in integrity of body, mind, and spirit, in obedience to your love, in the name of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and let us sing the call to confession together. Source of all true wisdom and goodness, how often we substitute our own wisdom and goodness for the way of life shown to us by Jesus Christ. Forgive us, we pray. Open our hearts to the simple, gentle, loving ways Jesus taught and empower us by your spirit so to live. Think about your baptism and smile. Think about your baptism with gratitude for God's grace. Friends, we are justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Trust the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now show signs of peace for one another as our children come forward for a time together. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Got a couple more coming up. Good morning. Have you guys ever heard of a type of race called a marathon? Yeah, it's a running race. Does anybody know, happen to know how far it is? It's a really, really long way, yeah. Yeah, 26.2. The point two is important because it comes at the end. You, you, you can feel it. Well, um, 
one time, I was training for a marathon, and it takes a long, long time to train your body to run that far, okay? So months and months and months. And every Saturday morning, I'd wake up early to go for a really long run, and I was on a team. I was on a team, kind of like a church is a team. And the team, every four miles, it'd be really, really hot like it's going to be today, and we'd be out there, I'd be running and sweating, and you'd feel awful, and you'd start to think to yourself, why am I doing this? This feels terrible. This is absolutely no fun. But then, and you'd, want, and you'd want to give up. You'd want to stop. You'd say, I'll just walk. I don't need to run. I just want to give up. Maybe I'll just run a half marathon instead. And then something would come up. It's called a sport and gear stop. And there'd be volunteers from our team every four miles on the run. There'd be volunteers who would have a station. And at the station, what do you think they would have for us? Water, what else? Food, yeah. Guys, they would have gummy bears. Gummy bears, which doesn't sound good, but like it's really, really good when you're running out in the heat. Gummy bears and pretzels with salt. And they'd have Powerade or Gatorade. And they would sometimes even have things like um, a Band-Aid if you're starting to get a blister or some, some um, like Vaseline. Sometimes they would have bathrooms. Yeah, like in bigger races, there'd be like a bathroom or a place to wipe off your face when you get really sweaty. Same sort of thing. Has anyone ever been um, hiking before? Yeah, like a lot of us have. Have you ever been hiking on something called the Appalachian Trail? Appalachian, Appalachian, I don't know. I don't want to cause controversy. <laughs> but for the purposes, the Appalachian Trail, that is some, there's a section of the Appalachian Trail that runs through our area even out in like Parisburg. And I bet a lot of you guys have been on it before, but the whole thing, sometimes people hike the entire thing. It goes all the way from Georgia, all the way to, does anybody know? Almost to Canada, to Maine, from Georgia to Maine. How, how far do you think that is, if you had to guess? 3,000 miles. 1,500, you guys are about close, meet in the middle, 2,193.1 <laughs> miles. The point one, exactly, the point one, it matters. And you know what, on that, on that hike, a lot of people set out to hike the whole thing, and a lot of times people give up, they can't make it the whole way. But sometimes, when they're hiking through, there is something that happens called Trail magic. Trail magic. And one time I was like, I've never hiked the whole thing. That'd be so cool. I wish I could do that. Maybe one day I will. But we were crossing, the trail crossed a road. And right there at the road crossing, somebody had left out a cooler. And in that cooler was cold water and cold Gatorade and even freezy pops. It was the best thing ever because it was so hot and we wanted to stop and we wanted to give up and it was, felt terrible. But when we got that trail magic, just like at those, those water stops when I was training for that marathon, it rejuvenated us and it helped us know, hey, we can make it. We can keep on going. It gave us strength and energy and hydration and it cheered us up and encouraged us and helped us feel like we can keep going. And... That's the kind of thing that Jesus talks to the disciples about in our scripture reading today. Jesus is sending them out into the world, and he's telling them to take up their cross and to follow Jesus, and he says, it's going to be really, really hard. Tough things are going to happen. You're going to want to give up. You're going to feel discouraged. You're not going to want to do this. But just at that moment, there's going to be kindness along the way. People are going to open their homes to you. People are going to offer you encouragement. People are going to feed you. And you're not going to have to do it alone. You get to go together. And there's going to be people on the way to show you and remind you that I'm with you and that we can do it together. So today, when we all take communion, I want you to think about that, and I want you to think of communion as one of those water stops or as one of those moments of trail magic along the way, 
a moment that renews you and gives you the strength to keep going as we all follow Jesus together. Can we say a prayer? Can you guys repeat after me? Dear God, Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always being with us. Especially when we get discouraged. Especially when we get discouraged. Renew us. Renew us. Encourage us. Encourage us. And help us to follow you. And help us to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Living God, open our ears to hear your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our lives to live your word. Amen. Great sermon, Emily. (laughs) Good morning. Our gospel lesson for today is brief and pithy. It's actually the tail end of a longer discourse in which Jesus prepares his disciples for their mission. Here are a few verses that set the stage for this morning's gospel reading. Jesus tells his disciples, don't go among the Gentiles or into a Samaritan city. Go instead to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. As you go, make this announcement. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with skin diseases, and throw out demons. Don't take a backpack for the road or two shirts or sandals or a walking stick. Whatever city or village you go into, find somebody in it who is worthy and stay there until you go on your way. If anyone refuses to welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet as you leave that house or city. Jesus warns the disciples that the way forward won't be easy, but they must not fear those who would persecute them, for everything will be revealed. Jesus says, what I say to you in the darkness, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, announce from the rooftops. Now listen for what God is saying to us today from Matthew 10, verses 40 through 42. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Many of us have participated in mission trips to various parts of the world where culture and customs are vastly different from our own. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner may not resemble meals of our own making, but are nevertheless nourishing and filling. We are dependent on our host hospitality for our basic needs and our safety. Without that, we are vulnerable, and to be vulnerable is to be open to things that make us feel uncomfortable, even fearful. Jesus would say, never mind, go and have this experience. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. This seems to me a high calling. Whatever our purpose in making the journey to poor countries rife with corruption and danger, we begin by being kind and compassionate. We must depend on and trust God for the details. If we have the courage to go, we will undoubtedly be changed by the experience. 
In 2012, Kathy McCullough and I took a group of students to Haiti. We were hosted by Haiti Outreach Ministries, staying in a compound that included a church, a school, a medical clinic, a sewing ministry, and guest accommodation for those of us who came to learn and volunteer. Our main task was to help with the building of simple houses just across the street, moving cinder blocks, mixing cement, doing just what needed to be done, and interacting with the villagers. Most of the children attended school just across the street in the compound, appearing in school uniforms made by the seamstresses in the compound. Once they returned home for the day, the uniforms were removed in favor of simple clothing or even nakedness. They were really cute kids. They gathered in little bunches around all the strangers in their midst, seeking attention, wanting to play games. Isabel, our only African-American student, was a very quiet and seemingly shy participant. What we watched unfold was nothing short of amazing. The little ones hovered around her, begging her to play with them. We realized that for the first time, Isabel was being surrounded by people that looked just like her, even on a mission trip. She had found her niche and was totally immersed in their well-being. Isabel was being transformed into a confident, caring disciple of Christ. Her smiles and demeanor throughout the trip rubbed off on everyone. Those little ones believed that Isabel had come just for them, and she had. What they didn't realize was how much their very presence meant to a solitary young woman. They were demonstrating the love of Christ for the stranger among them, and Isabel was returning that love tenfold. Christ's mission for the disciples would likely involve risk. Whenever we involve ourselves in a mission project, we know it could fail, be met with hostility, or worse. There will be highs and lows and rethinking along the way. We will learn from our mistakes and feel defeated. But Jesus reminds us to go and do it anyway. Otherwise, justice and mercy are not served, and Christ's love is not shared. Many of you know that I sponsor a Haitian student named Diego. I got to know him briefly on two different mission trips when we visited his village of Conch, home of Dr. Paul Farmer's tireless work to bring free medical care to the Haitian people. Thanks to the Episcopal Church, this village had a hospital, a school, a church, and a guest house for visitors. Jago would show up every evening to schmooze with the students and leaders. He wanted what our students had, a college education. He was raised by his great-grandmother, great-grandmother, who died at the age of 102. He never knew his parents and was only vaguely aware of his two much older siblings. He tenaciously kept in touch with me and others, hoping for some sort of sponsorship. It started with money for a passport and a visa to allow him to travel to the Dominican Republic. It is easier to qualify for college in the DR than in Haiti. So he set out to share living space with a friend already finishing a degree there. At some point, I had to commit to trust God for the details and to trust that Diego wasn't taking me for a joyride. I decided to risk it. With help from Mark Hare, our co mission co-worker, who then lived in the Dominican Republic, we were able to advise Diego in useful ways. He spent a year learning Spanish, then enrolled in the public university in Santo Domingo. That was five years ago. He now has his certification in medical imaging, and with a few more courses, he will graduate in the top 10% of his class. Lord have mercy, he's talking about graduate school. <laughs> it is easy to make the leap to the message of Matthew 25. I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. 
I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Members of this church have long been involved in mission projects that speak to this gospel message about helping everyone without judgment. Think about how, when, and why the Holy Spirit nudged you into action. Shane Claiborne, a well-known and avid evangelist for Christ, keynoted at the Montreat College Conference one year, and he inspired several adults from this congregation to consider how they could do more back home. They returned, poised to do more to help the vulnerable in our community. The Praise Team, spelled P-R-A-Y-S, was born under the leadership of Joe Ivers and Brenda Roberts. Praise stands for Presbyterians Ready at Your Service, volunteers helping those in need in very practical ways. In a span of six years, 200 projects were carried out, and Joe shared with me he'd never been happier or more fulfilled. You know the woodchucks. The woodchucks prepare wood from all around the community to provide firewood for folks in need throughout the winter. They deliver some 200 loads of firewood each year. Those who participate know that the need for warmth in winter is just scratching the surface. At holiday time, bags of food are gathered up to deliver to many who also receive wood. And in response to the death of a well-known homeless man, Jan Mathis and others started To Our House, which provides shelter, food, laundry, and hospitality to homeless men and some women. Many churches and volunteers are involved in unique and various ways to provide for their needs. At BPC, volunteers offer to meet with folks in need of resources to improve their circumstances. It's an extension of To Our House. We felt like we weren't doing enough. VICCC provides childcare for low-income families, and members of this church were instrumental in its early days and beyond, even today. During the pandemic, our congregation was blessed by efforts of Lloyd Campbell to reach to teach us how best to interact with folks with memory loss, ways of extending welcome and hospitality to a growing population. Mask making was staged out of this church to provide protection for a wide range of people. Scott and Melanie Smith are involved in prison ministry, helping those who are out to have a place to live and help to find employment. Kathy Carpenter meets with them to lead devotions. Many have been and are involved in helping immigrant families that have come to live in Blacksburg. The list goes on and on and on, but one thing is certain. The Holy Spirit is alive and well in this place, with room for all to participate. Our scripture says, I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones, because they are my disciples, will certainly be rewarded. When I think of giving a cup of cold water, I immediately think of the Synod of the Living Waters that trains partners to work together in covenant to provide communities with a source of clean water. They work all over the world. And Presbyterian disaster assistance, working to bring relief following hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, and tornadoes, to name a few. And let's not forget the efforts of members and friends of this church who reach out in ways often unseen and unheard of to support one another, offering rides to appointments, treatments, and choir, offering a listening ear to those who might otherwise have no one, cooking and delivering meals for those who are in treatment, just home from the hospital, or grieving a loss, hosting visitors to the church, helping sort through a lifetime of belongings to move to a better living situation. That list is almost endless and ongoing. 
Our world is in great need of cups of cold water, especially those who've been separated from family, church, community, and country. It's hard to imagine being in their place. So it's important to begin with kindness and compassion, leaving behind judgment. This is the season of ordinary time, and it seems fitting to celebrate ordinary acts of kindness and care that yield extraordinary results. We are indeed called as Christ's disciples to offer hospitality in large ways and small, according to our gifts, to practice mutual dependence, trusting God for the details. May we be reminded of all this and more as we share the sacrament of Holy Communion. Amen. May be seated. Friends, we are so blessed. Now I challenge you to be generous in your giving this morning.
good and holy God, for your steadfast love and faithfulness, we give you thanks and bless your name. Let our whole lives become songs of gratitude, joy, and praise, so that all the earth may know that we are your people and you are our God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the first believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, we gather at the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. The Lord be with you, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord God, we look at the beauty around us, the earth you formed and shaped and called good, sun to nurture and rain to nourish, oceans to rage and rivers to run, flowers springing forth like laughter. We remember the touch of your hand throughout history, bringing forth new evolution, new possibilities, new manifestations of your creativity and joy. We remember this long story of our ancestors in faith, how you did not neglect the poor, enslaved, and oppressed, but brought the Hebrews out of Egypt's scorn and into a promised land full of milk and honey, how you gave them law and guidance along the way, calling them into a community following your commandments. We remember also how faithfulness fell apart, how we turned to idols and greed, how we neglected to care for the orphan and immigrant, cheated in the marketplace and lied in the courts. Still, you gave us more of your beauty, your word in the mouths of the prophets, calling us to repent, to turn around, and to come home to you, to wait for the Lord and the new things that you will do. In time, you sent us your Son, Jesus the Christ, the most beautiful that was in you, you yourself, present with us in human form. Jesus spoke hard truths and gentle comfort, healed the sick, and welcomed the outcast. He lavished mercy and power on those the world thought unworthy. And he was killed. He was mocked, tortured, executed, He faced the worst of the worst. Still, there was beauty in God's heart. And on the third day, in the midst of a garden morning, Jesus rose from the tomb to pronounce our salvation, death's defeat, and life everlasting. We praise the Spirit who makes these stories our stories. And we trust that this same Spirit comes alongside us in this feast, Pour yourself out, we pray, over these gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be for us the sign and sacrament of your extravagant love. In this holy meal, unite, nourish, and strengthen us until you come again in glory. Until that day, we lift the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this 
in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. So let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and guide you, guard you, and make you bold to live a life of trust and deep joy. Go in peace. Amen.